Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and this is Ukulele. Ukulele is a collectathon game developed by Playtonic Games and published by Team 7. It was kickstarted in 2015 to the tune of $2.7 million, proudly stating its intent to revive the long dead genre that Banjo and Kazooie had spearheaded. They even called it a Rare Revival in reference to the developer Rare, maker of the Banjo and Conquer collectathon games. They did this for good reason too, because many of Playtonic's game developers were also former members of Rare. Ukulele was released in 2017 at the price of $40 for PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Alright, so how do I say something about this game that hasn't already been said? The truth of the matter is, there are two ways this review is going to go. I could sit here and tell you this is a regurgitation of a long dead collectathon genre, and it is a champion of that genre's strengths and it's a victim of its faults. I would give it a dunce hat and some of my viewers would like me for being honest, and some would hate me because I didn't realize that was the point, damn it. Or I could sing the praises about how I kickstarted this game when it was first announced and that I am impressed at Platonic's ability to perfectly recreate my childhood as I remember it. All of which would be a true statement, and I would give the game a gold star and half of you would be angry and the other half would be happy. The thing is, they're both correct, and if I were to keep my review style consistent here, then I would say the people that would really enjoy ukulele are the people that want to relive their nostalgia of the classic collectathon games. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, I can, with a fair amount of certainty, say the developer can only get away with a nostalgia-based game once. Maybe twice. In the end, there's all sorts of development choices Ukulele made that were clearly efforts to make ties to the Banjo-Kazooie games, but go against modern game design. So instead of having a well fleshed out review on Ukulele and nitpicking all the bad parts, I'm going to make some observations on some of the design choices and hypothesize how they might make a better game in the next iteration. So let's begin. In Ukulele, there are two main collectibles you acquire. One are these feathers, called quills. They are scattered throughout the world, and the second are the pages, which are the cornerstone item you need to collect in order to unlock new areas and eventually beat the boss. Honestly, I have no problem with how pages are used, as they are the base MacGuffin you collect. The quills are another story. Quills are used as a currency to purchase new moves from Trouser, thus allowing you to access more of the game. The problem is that it's fairly easy to collect enough quills in order to buy all the moves, so easy that it hardly merits a challenge. With just a moderate amount of diligence, you will collect far more quills than you will need to unlock all the moves in the game. My problem is that the only incentive for collecting all the quills is for completionism, which should never be the only incentive. I propose that an alternative use for quills should be an option after all the moves are purchased. I actually think rather than having an expansion for your energy bar and your health bar as hidden items in the game, that they should be alternative items you can purchase and that quills don't carry over from one level to another. Alternatively, you can add different collectible items entirely to buy moves, and the quills can be used to unlock more health slash energy, or they could be used to overcome new obstacles. This would work very similarly to how banana coins and bananas worked in Donkey Kong 64. Now the stream of criticism Ukulele has had regarding its writing has been overwhelmingly negative for the most part. But honestly, I don't think it's all that bad. Do I think it's a work of art? No, of course not, but it's completely adequate for the E-rated game it delivered. The game's writing is inoffensive and horribly cartoony, and that's great! considering that's what they were clearly aiming for. I mean, if I didn't want a cheesy and cartoony game, why would I have picked up a game that looks like this? That all being said, there are a few areas in the game that I thought the writing could use some sprucing up. The first and most notable was the fourth wall breaking ukulele does. And yes, I know, fourth wall breaking was a big part of Banjo-Kazooie, but it's expected in many modern games to shy away from it However, my problem isn't necessarily that they so bluntly do it. I think it's rather important for Ukulele to remain self-aware that it is a video game, but I do think it needs to tone it down in the beginning of the game. I felt like every other action or new mechanic in the game was met with a quip about how much it was like a game. 
The funny thing is, they tone it down to about the appropriate tone three hours into the game. And it's how often I suggest the fourth wall banter between Yuka and Lele should occur. Enough to be funny, but not half the jokes in the game. Whew, gonna alienate some people on this one. Yeah, I know. There was no voice acting in Banjo either. But let me put my two cents in. When Rare did the nonsense sounds in their games, it was because the N64 cartridge could only hold so much information, especially with sound. Also, voice acting is easier when you don't have to say anything understandable. They shortcut this by reusing some of the short sounds over and over again to make gibberish. It was definitely genius at the time, and it gave the game's character that others simply didn't have. However, it's 2017 and it no longer makes any sense. What's more, I think many of the lines critics had been complaining about would have not been considered that bad if a good voice actor delivered them. A voice actor would have also helped bring the characters to life, as in the game I found it hard to get a read on any of their character types with just text. All I understood was Yuka was the nice guy and Laylee was kind of a bitch, and I imagine that having actual voices may help bring their characteristics out. I teach you how to dig underground. <gasps> that would... Wait, that can't do that! I know, but I can teach you. Dude, that'd be sick. That would be pretty sick. I do think that having voice acting in the entirety of the game is not necessary. There's something to say for having Babel as references to its origins. I think that having voices in cutscenes and in stagnant conversations such as talks with Trouser and Retro would be enough to add more character to the game. This section should be fairly short. Yeah, the quiz section was novel the first time, but it lost all novelty the second and third time. Perhaps use a puzzle boss instead, or at the very least a traditional boss, but don't do the pop quiz thing more than once. Side note, I appreciated the optional bosses in each world. They did a good job on differing them and how you hurt them and how you dodge their attacks. In my opinion, there needs to be more creativity in the sandbox worlds they had. I, again, think they stuck to what they know, so they made worlds that were reminiscent of the old collectathon games. That's all well and good for the first game, but I'm not sure if the mundanity of the worlds would be considered plausible in the future installments. I'm not saying that the worlds by themselves are boring, but with the exception of the last one, they have been done in very similar rare games before them. The genre is not lacking in any new places either, as late installments and honestly the magnus opus of the collectathon genre were praised for having some of the most amazing places to explore or at least something completely new to explore. There is no reason Ukulele couldn't do it anyways, as the way they wrote the narrative clearly gave them a completely blank canvas in order to make worlds. The book teleports you to a separate world, i.e. whatever the developers imagine makes sense. In conclusion, I liked Ukulele for the novelty of it. It is perhaps the most faithful spiritual successor game ever created, but I worry about it. While it does make a hell of a modern banjo game, I fear that that's its only real audience. People who want to relive Banjo and Kazooie. Not that I think that that's necessarily a dry well, but I'm afraid that the people that did want that already paid into the Kickstarter. I don't think there are many gamers interested in it when it finally released, and the middling, I be it honest, scores it got likely hurt any new people that were likely to come into the genre. As a longtime fan of Rare, I have no problem with the game. However, as a critic, that's a different story. I wouldn't say I loved it, but I would say at the very least, it scratched my collectathon itch. I'm hoping Platonic continues to make games similar to this, but build on what worked and what didn't. But what do you guys think? Did I forget something? What should be worked on, or did I say something you disagree with? If so, comment down below, and thanks for watching.